Dann? In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The waters of baptism, Stephen died with Christ, and rose with him to new life, and now share with him eternal glory. Sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ. By dying on the cross, he has freed us from death and eternal life. And rising, he opened the gates for us to heaven. Let's pray for our brother Stephen, that he may share in Christ's victory. Let us pray for ourselves, the Lord who grant us the gift of his love and consolation. Let's have a seat now for two eulogies from the friends of Stephen. everybody. Um, I was given this opportunity to speak um, about my very good friend Stephen. Uh, Stephen Paul Otto David aka Popo, born on the 21st of March, 23rd of March 1955. He was age 68. I first met Stephen when around 18 or 19 years old, almost 48 years ago. We used to lime on Frederick Street because he used to work on Y Dilemma during our lunch hour and on Fridays. Stephen, I, I, I think he went to Minerva College, but I know for sure he went to Sacred Art College. Right? After there, he started working um, with Caribbean shipping agencies. Um, and we worked together there for a number of years. Actually, Pupo recommended me for that job. After that, he worked with maritime shipping agencies, Marriott Shipping, and later worked at Lloyd Caribbean Limited, which is very successful and ran that business, um, and also with Stefan. Uh, after that successful stint, Pupo decided to take early retirement. One thing I remember about Stephen, he had a strong work ethic. No matter what, he took his job very seriously and was diligent and dependable. He was an asset because of his vast knowledge and experience in the shipping industry. Since he worked from island schooners to global urea and methanol tankers. In our lineman days, Daryl, Kopi, Francis and myself, and Stephen, we would pay, we would go by Stephen Asu, 
one of our friends every Saturday to play Knock Rumi. Sometimes these games would take us straight into the morning, trying to win back a little Kakada. Unfortunately, Stephen died, and so did the king, the, the, the card games. We really had a great time together. Four of us squeezing through pit to see a kick up with Daryl, especially since Daryl was the martial artist in the line. Sometimes, the car, uh, sometimes you know, the part we will meet. Oh, sometimes when we get bored, Daryl will say to us, let's go to San Fernando and eat roti. And just so everybody just jump in the car and go on, because Daryl is the only one who had a car. But Pupo had like a piece pie on Shakan Street. And then George doubles by Brooklyn Bar. But he used to eat extra, extra, extra pepper. So sometimes when Stephen finished the doubles, he hiccup up in whole morning. So, and he also was a man who loved his KFC boy. Like God can send KFC for Popo. He used to eat KFC all the time. And he had some strange eating habits. He used to eat Pela with cricks. You understand? So Popo was a really good friend of Francis, Blade Sky, one of the country's best recording artists to date. He had many hit songs like Fool in Love, White Horse, just to mention a few. Popo, Darrell, and myself follow Firefly all over the place. Darrell Bailey was Popo's special friend. First time I met Darrell, Popo asked him, what are you doing with that duffel bag on your back, boy, in Woodbrook? He said, I ran away from home. Yes, I can't take them on a tall home. Next thing you know, he and his mother pull up in the car and say, Daryl, get your tail in the car right now. And that was the end of that runaway story. On weekends, the boys would meet by the base, by Popo, on Arapita Avenue, even before the, the um, highway was built, the um, Foreshaw Freeway was built. We will go there to prime up before we go partying. As time passed, we eventually started bringing our girlfriends just to lime and go carnival fits. And one of the girls would always have a headache and want to go home. I guess she wanted to spend more time with her boyfriend. But, you know, that's how we used to lime. And that's the same person who kills two stones with one boot at a Christmas line by Steve Monday. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen met this, the love of his life when he worked with Supermix Feeds. Good Gail, good Thai foot boy. Since they were nice, people will tell me he would leave by Gail and turn left on the highway instead of right. And when he reached Wallafield, he said, Oh, shocks are going in the wrong direction. He had to turn back and come back down the road. So, you know, the. the after that, the rest is history. Stephen and Gail got married and has two boys, Stefan and Sterling, and now a beautiful granddaughter, which I understand he adored very much. We all eventually got married, settled down. However, on Boxing Day, we would meet and the boys would line. And a couple of, for a couple of years, and then the lady said, no more of that. And that was the end of our Boxing Day line. Many times, Gail would, 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 would tell me that she would take my name of a stolen birth certificate because I can never remember his birthday. But I think I will remember it now, you know. And anyway, happy belated birthday. Stephen was our ultimate friend. He was a true brother, a brother from another mother. We had great times together and sad times too with the passing of his brother Eugene and many friends along the way. Popo will always have a special place in our memory and our hearts. God bless you, my brother. And we will e eventually meet one day and paint heaven red and give it a second coat just to make sure like when we use Lyman. Thank you very much. I will do my best. What I have to say today 
while it applies to everybody, I will be speaking directly to Stefan and Stulen. Because men need to tell men that it is okay to cry, to grieve, to fall apart, to feel all alone in that hollow called grief. You don't need permission. I am a man and I am here to tell you that you could do that. When my old man passed away 20 years ago, next month, my heart broke into a million little pieces. The tears that poured out of my heart were hot. It scared me. I didn't know if I would make it. But I had a mom to take care of. And two months later, I was getting married for the second time. So I had to pull it together. At the wedding, I remember getting up to say something as the groom and looking at all of these excited and beautiful faces in front of me. And I said, I miss my dad. Wedding broke up. Everything fall apart. They had to tote my mother to the side, fan her. I started crying uncontrollably. Five years later, well, before that, for the first year, I would spend every week, two to three times a week in the cemetery, talking to my dad. Because men have a way they don't really communicate like that. They talk in code. The women in here know exactly what I'm talking about, right? They say something and they expect you to interpret the rest. So me and my dad never really talk a lot. And I also didn't let him in either. So I used that first year to kind of just really catch up with his spirit. Five years later, Christmas time, radio playing, Luther Vandross song, Dance With My Father, came on. Well, my heart broke into a million little pieces again. And those tears didn't want to stop. It was another five years before I challenged myself to listen to that song, to see if I would make it through that song. I listened to the whole song. I cried. But then I asked, but I never danced with my father. So I wondered if it was a woman who wrote that song and they gave it to Luther Vandross to sing. But what started happening is as I started reflecting on the things that my father said to me, whether I wanted to accept it or not, I realized that he was building my compass. He was giving me the cardinal points in life that I would pass on to my children and they would pass on to theirs. That was his legacy of love that he was giving to me. And when I meditate on those things, I would start to hear his voice. I would see his beautiful smile and I would be able to dance with my father. I want you to know that you will be able to dance with your father too. Because I know you would have had those times where you didn't want to hear what he had to say. But life and that legacy of love, it will stay with you for the rest of your life. And at the right times, when you need it the most, you will hear what he had to say. I will tell you about a time that your father added to my compass. It was a carnival fete in the Oval. The band was getting ready to go on stage. I had my guitar in my hand, focusing, thinking about what we're going to do, getting ready to mash up the place, waiting on that signal to go on the stage and just destroy it. I get this little tap on my shoulder. I look around. Steve, Paul, Otto, Popo, David. 
show up in the people party. He say, I say, wait, bro, what's going on? What are you doing here? I'm not expecting you to come to this party. He said, I didn't come to a party. He said, I come to have a man to man with you. I come to talk to you about the way you live in your life. And the trail of heartbreak and misery you're leaving in your wake. I say, bro, we could do this another time again, ready to go on stage. He said, no. He said, you're going to do it now. I said, but again, ready to go on stage. He said, I will speak to you now. And he had that conversation with me. I didn't really hear him. I mean, I didn't listen, but I heard him. And what I realized is he added to my compass. And I know that if I meditate on him and I remember his voice and I remember the things that he told me because I remember it, and that's only one instance eh, of many, I will be able to dance with my brother again. So I want you to know It's okay. Good day, people. They didn't want me to sleep. They didn't want me to sleep this evening. Some of people afraid what I'm going to say. David, you can relax. You can relax. All the breed, breed. Just the way that I dress, showing that I cannot be behaving already. Even when Freddy come to pick me up, this you see, but we did not in our short pants. They don't have on a cap. They hear comb. So I'll behave myself. I have few friends. Block them right here. I know a lot of people, eh? Plenty of people. Not the whole church. They're, my, they're my friends right here. Me and Stephen go wrong plenty. I don't want to stay too long because when I start, Gail, they know I ain't gonna stop. Gail, in particular the two boys. Anything. You need anything you want, any reach out, one or all three gonna arrive. I ask them nothing, I ain't tell the discussion with them by telling you. Reach out, one or all three gonna be there. God bless. Our tribute song, I believe, is a message directly from Stephen. Telling all of his loved ones, his friends and family, that he is okay. He is healed, he is whole again, and he is happy. And if you would allow me to deliver that message to you on his behalf, I present to you the song, If You Could See Me Now. have all been answered I've finally arrived the healing that had been delayed has now been realized no one's in a hurry there's no schedule to keep we're all enjoying Jesus just sitting at his feet if you could see me now I'm walking streets of gold If you could see me now I'm standing tall and whole If you could see me now You'd know I've seen his face If you could see me now You'd know the pains he You wouldn't want me to ever leave this place If you could only see me now My light and temporary trials 
have worked out for my good to know it brought him glory when I misunderstood though we've had our sorrows they can never compare what Jesus has in store for us no language can share if you could see me now I'm a walking streets of gold If you could see me now I'm standing tall and whole If you could see me now You'd know I've seen His face If you could see me now You'd know the pains He raised You wouldn't want me to ever leave this perfect place if you could only see me now if you could see me now if you could only see me Let us stand for prayer this time. Almighty God and Father, it is certain faith that your Son who died on the cross and raised from the dead, the first fruits of all of fallen asleep, grant that through this mystery your servant Stephen, who has gone to his eternal rest, may share in the joy of the resurrection. We ask this, O Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, there's a reign of the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let's so have a seat now for the reading. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They are leaving us like annihilation. But they are at peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction. Great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out as sparks run through the stubble. So will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in a pasture's green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. My soul.
Could you please stand? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Anyone who believes in me will never die. Hallelujah. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If you were not, I shall have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone prepared a place for you, I shall return to take you with me. Where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I'm going? Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No one could come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have a seat. It also tells the question, what is life? What can I exchange for life? What can I replace this life with? The answer is one big zero, nothing. Nothing is greater than life itself. And if our desire, or God's desire, or our plan, which we wanted to, would seem to still be alive, we would have been alive. But this is God's plan. This is not my plan, your plan, Gail's plan, Stephen's plan, um, Sterling's plan. It's not their plan. This is God's plan. This is God's plan for him. Because for each and every one of us, there's a beginning and an end. We come into the world and we go at some time. It's not forever. So this is Stephen's journey. Are we all going to make the same journey at some time in our lives? Because you go back to creation, when this all began, began in creation account. When God took the soil of the earth, he breathed his life into it and gave it to Adam. He breathed his raw, his life into that form, became a human being. When God takes that breath away, you go back to dust from which we have come. So for us, it's a journey. I look at it, you know, there's a middle passage because we begin and we end. But what happens in the middle is so important. What happens in the middle of our lives is so important. So us today, we come to celebrate the life of Stephen David was known by Popo and all the other names he's known by. Yes, we come to celebrate his life. He had a wonderful life, an interesting life, a happy life. Yes, we've lived our lives. But then we come to count for our lives at the end of the journey. End of the journey, God calls us to. But I said there's beginning and the end. What fills it? But let's not be doubtful. Let's not doubt. Our gospel told us today, it just says, there are many rooms in my father's house. I'm going before you to prepare a place for you. So where I am, you may be too. That's the promise of Jesus. He never goes back on his promises. He's gone to prepare a place for Stephen. Stephen's now on the way in the kingdom of God. On the way to the room that I always tell people from time to time, there's a room up there in the kingdom of God for you with your name over the doorpost. There's a room in the kingdom of God with Stephen David over the doorpost. Each one of us has a room there. Jesus told us so. Jesus does not go back on his promises. He has said so. So we know our God is a merciful, loving God. Yes, he's a merciful, loving God for each and every one of us. We have to tap into that mercy, and God will pour his mercy into our lives. Yes, let's not be afraid to cry out to God when you have done wrong in our lives. Say, God, forgive me. I've sinned against you. Forgive me. This is God. God for us. We have to understand this is a God who forgives and sets free. A God who loves a God who cares, a God who gives us the breath that we breathe. This is God. God takes that breath away and we go back to him. But there for us is the mercy of God. And I've seen that mercy of God so powerful the last day of Stephen's life. He called out to God. God heard him. God set him free from his sins. 
And Stephen said at the end of the time when I visited him a day before he died, he said, I am happy. And those words are shared in his song, I'm happy. He said, I am happy. And those are the last words that he shared. Is that Gail? That just happy. He was happy. So let's be happy for Stephen, who was happy in the last day of his life. As we happy for him and say, God has taken him because God wanted him. At this appointed time, this Kairos time, this special moment, God wanted Stephen David home with him. And God gave him the grace that Stephen could say at the end of his life, the last couple of hours, the last 24 hours of his life, I am happy. What a blessing is that for Stephen? What's a blessing for that for the family? So in the midst of your sadness, your pain, your separation, think of Stephen being happy and seeing the face of God. That's what your consoling factor should be in your life at this time. Think of Stephen who said on the last day of his life that he was happy, very happy. What more do you want in life? We more want in life that to be happy on the last day of our life and be united with God again and experience God's mercy, God's compassion, God's love. Yes, that's the journey for us. But some of us, we want to say sadly, but have the opportunity to have it before we die. But let's make that happen in our lives. Let's not wait for that ultimate moment. Let's find this God. This God of Jesus Christ. This God who has blessed us. This God who suffered and died on a cross for us. This is the God that we worship. There's one God, the God of Jesus Christ. That's our God. That's my God. That's the God whom I worship. We have to find that God in our lives. But aside all the things of this world, all the activities of this world, all, I have to say, the lime and the party and the drinking, all that passes away. They said the world passes away, but God's word does not pass away. So we have to seek the better things in life. Because you're so consumed by the world, the world attracts us. But then we have to look and see, is this world leading me to God? Is this world leading me to a deep peace could only come from knowing this God? That's the journey we have to take. The world leads us to nowhere. A door to God leads us to peace, to happiness in our lives. So us, we say farewell. Farewell to Stephen. A life lived with joy, peace, and happiness. A man who loved his family, loved his sons, uh, sons and his wife, his grandchild. He loved everyone. He lived his life. Now, at this point, God has called him back. The lies say we look at him, knowing that this God has called him back to himself. God has called him to himself because God loves him. And God loves us too. Let us recognize the love of God. Let us recognize the mercy of God for us. Let us tap in that mercy of God for each and one of us. Let us tap in that mercy and recognize this is a merciful, forgiving, loving God that we have. He does not turn his back on us. We may turn our backs on him, but he does not turn his back on us. Let us believe, let us trust Allow the consolation of this moment, knowing that Stephen has seen the face of God. He is happy. Let us be happy for him. Let us surrender back to God. Ask God to ease our pain. From the prophet Isaiah says, He turn away our mourning into dances, our sorrow into joy. He wipe away every tear from our eyes so we could rejoice in God's presence. I rejoice. But let's believe this God will do this for us. This is a journey for each and one of us. Allow God to touch your hearts. Gail and the boys, allow God to touch your hearts and bring you closer to him. Allow God to touch your hearts and comfort you. This is not a punishment. This is God at work. Allow God to work in your hearts. Allow God to bring you closer to him. Let God's comfort be with you. God is a comforting, loving God, a merciful God. The prophet Isaiah says, comfort my people, comfort my people. Yes. God will comfort this David family at this time and strengthen them in the moment of grief. This is our God. A God who loves, a God who is merciful. A God who has given Stephen life. And our God's appointed time, he says, my son, come back to me. If it were our will, we would not be here today. But this is God's will at work. Let's allow God's will to be done in our lives. And let God's peace fill us at this moment. Let his healing presence be upon us so we can experience God's mercy, God's love, God's compassion, and God's forgiveness. And let us recognize we are the ones left behind. We have time to prepare ourselves for this moment. 
Prepare yourselves. It's going to come. But let's be ready when our God calls. So the day we say farewell to Stephen. Farewell for life well lived. May you rest in peace. We experience that great, beautiful city, the new Jerusalem that God has prepared for you. We experience it and live in it every day of your life. Because God has called him back to himself. So at this time, let's surrender Stephen back to God. He came to the world, he's now gone back to God. May his soul rest in peace, the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's stand to bring our intercessions before God. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ the Son from the dead. Confidence we ask him to save all people, living and dead. For Stephen, who in baptism is given the pledge of eternal life, they now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. For the saints, relatives, and friends, for all who helped us, they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, amen. For those who have fallen asleep and hope rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. The family and friends of our brother Stephen, they may be consoled and grieved by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. For all of us assembled here to worship and faith, gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, amen. Be in a special way for the family of Stephen at this time of their loss. Lord, be their strength, their support, their hope, their peace. Be for them today, as they say, this final farewell to Stephen. May they experience your peace in their hearts. May they experience your love, your mercy, and compassion. May they experience you, God, the wonderful work in their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, amen. We pray for ourselves. For each and one of us, there's a need in our hearts. There's some need in each and one of us. A care, concern, and anxiety. Let's bring these before God at this time. Ask God to hear and answer our prayers. Let's ask God to bring a healing into your life, a peace into your life. Move the anxiety and fear that you experience as the people of God, or experience our nation today. Come, Lord, touch your people gathered here as you say goodbye to Stephen. Fill them with a peace, with a love. May they know of you as the Lord and God. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious. Amen. We for our own nation of Trinidad Tobago, you bless and heal our land. Lord, hear us. Our shelter and our strength, listen love to cry for your people. Hear the prayers you offer for departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. You ask Mary, beloved mother, to pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As we make all these prayers to Jesus Christ, our Lord, have a seat, have a song. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate for you all with us. We will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. Here a million wounded souls are yearning just to touch you and be We believe. 
Time of the final farewell, final commendation. We say goodbye to the remains of our brother. Knowing God is calling back to himself, knowing he's on a journey to God. Say goodbye to this body, but know the spirit lives on. But life is there for us. But death is a change of being. A change of being, physical body lives no more. But the spirit of God is in us lives forever. That spirit is about source to the Father at this time. Let us really console ourselves in knowing Stephen is on his way, a kingdom God has prepared for him. Trust in God, we pray for Brother Stephen. And now come to the last farewell, the sadness and parting, the comfort and hope of one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation is dispersed in sorrow, mercy of God gathers together again to of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another with the faith of Jesus Christ. Into your hands we command the Spirit of the Lord. Into your hands, Father Mercy, command our brother Stephen, a sure and certain hope, gather all died in Christ, he rises with them on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessing bestowed upon him in his life, a sign to us of your goodness, of fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain, to comfort one another in assurances of faith, or meet in Christ with you, our brother forever. Amen. The shed, you've come from the dust of the earth. You go back to the dust of the earth. That's who we are. Here for a while, but not for a while on earth, but not forever. Our soul, as said, lives on. Let us really recognize this body here. We go back to the earth. Become dust once again, as it was at the beginning of creation. But the soul of Stephen David will live on. Because God 
loved him into being. God loved him into creation. God loved him before he was born. As Psalm 139 tells us, he knitted me together in my mother's womb. Yes, God knitted each and every one of us together in our mother's womb. God has a plan. This is God's plan for Stephen. It's God's plan for him to go back to God at this appointed time, this Kairos moment. Let us surrender him to God. Knowing you're just here for a while. Let's allow that thought to comfort us at this time. You're just here for a while. God has a greater plan. Neither you nor I would know. God knows what he's about. Let's surrender this moment to God. Let's surrender him, Stephen, back to God. Let's surrender our own souls to God. God may do his will within each and one of us. Let's not be fearful. Let's trust. It's our God at work in each and one of your lives. Gather here to commend our brother Stephen, the God our Father, and, and to commit his body to the earth. For we, for we are dust, and the dust we shall return. Because God has chosen to call our brother Stephen from his life to himself, commit his body to the earth. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. I will proclaim. Lord Jesus Christ who changed our mortal bodies like his in glory. For he's risen, the firstborn from the dead. Let us commend our brother Stephen to the Lord. The Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Because we as Christians, Catholics, believe in the resurrection. Do you know we rise again on the last day? And meet our God, we take up the eternal kingdom that God has prepared for each and every one of us. Let's stand for our prayer. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessings. Merciful Lord, in the anguish of the sorrowful, you attended the prayer of the humble. Hear people who cry out to you in the need and strengthen the hope in lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. It in a rest run unto him, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon him. We rest in peace. May soul and souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the angels, may mighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Stephen, angels lead you to paradise. The martyrs come to welcome you, lead you to the holy city, the new Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you, Lead to the bosom of Abraham. Lazarus is poor no longer. May you find eternal rest. Let's all go in the peace of Christ our Lord. Amen. Our funeral service is ended. Seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes have rather stored. He has loosed his faithful lighting of his terrible sweet sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. He's true.
In the beauty of the lilies, Christ is born across the sea, with the glory in his hooves, and that shall sing as you and me, as he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free, while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, glory.
Thank you.